This is Remy, and today we will review an example uh, provided by Ticketfly to use the Jenkins DSL in a more advanced way compared to the previous example. So let's consider the following use case. Um, let's pick uh, a company uh, that has a lot of open source repo on GitHub. So let's pick Netflix. Uh, if we look at Netflix, uh, 130 uh, repo here. Um, you can uh, explore some of the projects that they have and you will find that a lot of the projects that they are hosted on GitHub are using uh, Gradle. So you can see here build.gradle, Gradle wrapper. So Gradle is a build tool that uh, allow you to uh, build a project in a consistent way across multiple uh, projects. So basically you take a project and if there is a Gradle file in it, so in this case it's not a uh, project, Gradle project, but let's pick this one, uh, Jenny, and uh, you will see that there is a Gradle builder, Gradle, there is a Gradle wiper, and you should be able to uh, build this project by doing Gradle build. So what we're going to do here is to provide an example that will generate uh, the Jenkins jobs for all the Gradle project for a given uh, GitHub org. So in that case, we can pick Netflix. So let's let's run our example. So I'm gonna copy the name of the example uh, from Docker Hub. Then I'm gonna go in my terminal. I will do Docker run. I will expose the Jenkins port. And then I will run this image. So this is fairly quick and you should be able to see a Jenkins up and running locally at port 8080. Okay, so I'm gonna run the example and then we will uh, review the code while it's running. Um, so it comes with a, a special job that's called generate org jobs. And we can run build a job with some parameters. So let's do that. And uh, by default, we just pick Netflix, that's the org. GitHub token is if you want to run against uh, some private repos, and you're going to need to have a GitHub token to see these repos. And if you don't sell it, you will only look at the public repo. And type, uh, we uh, have implemented Gradle, but as you can see uh, later in the code, we will uh, be able to extend this if we want to support other types. So I'm going to build this job and we can follow up what is going to do. So uh, the first thing we will do is to uh, install Gradle to run that project. Um, I can also look at the configuration of this job so we can start reviewing how this is uh, configured. So here we have the parameters that are uh, listed, then um, we have some code where we get some uh, GitHub libraries. And I don't need to go into the detail at this point, but just to show you the, the files that are called. And then we have a, a call um, to deploy a file called generate jobs for org. And this is the code that I want to review with you later. And then later we just uh, involve a Gradle script lib, so that will download the GitHub libraries locally. And then we will call that DSL job called generate jobs for orgs. So let's look at the status of the job now, it's, it's done. And so now if I go back to my homepage for Jenkins, I see we have a folder called Netflix. And if I open this folder, we have 58 jobs that were generated uh, right now. So now what I want to do just for this, uh, this test is to run one of these jobs here. So I'll take this one. Uh, it's called Friga. Um, but it's to give you an example that these jobs are generated and actually can be executed uh, in Jenkins. Um, if you look at what this job does, it's fairly simple. So it's generating a job and it's getting the description from the uh, GitHub repo, 
and uh, doing a git uh, checkout locally and then uh, it's invoking a Gradle build that will build that project and then it's uh, archiving the, the build directory for that project. So while this is running, we will go and review the, the code. So go back to this example, Docker Hub, you will have the link to the GitHub repo. This is where the example uh, source code is uh, located. And you should be able to find the example number four. And in that directory, we should be able to find the generate jobs for org. So let's open that file. And so this is the file when we create an org, when we give an org, we can generate the Jenkins jobs for that org. And this is uh, the two steps that we find in, in there. Number one is to uh, use the GitHub API libraries to search for the repos and only select the repos that are uh, Gradle repos for this implementation. And then the second step is for every repo will generate a Jenkins job. So this is a generic implementation here. And uh, we have implemented one use case is for Gradle, but you could uh, extend this and implement this for multiple type of projects. So this is where we have the mapping between the type of the project and the file that we're looking for. So in that case, we say it's a Gradle project. So we will uh, look for a file called Gradle.w, which is the Gradle wrapper uh, file. So the first part of the code is to call uh, GitHub. So we'll do a GitHub search and we'll search into the GitHub or Netflix in our case. And then we search for the Gradle.w file. And then uh, we have some extra configuration to only filter the repo uh, belonging to that org and only select if the file uh, Gradle.w is at the root level of this project. And um, once we done with GitHub uh, search, we will have a list of uh, repo that uh, were found through the GitHub API. And the next step would be to iterate all the repo and generate the Jenkins job for, for it. So here we have a, a call to the implementation. So it's called generic and the type. Uh, and it takes a repo in, uh, in parameter. So in our case, for Gradle, you will find uh, later in that code an implementation for gener generic Gradle job. And that's where you will see uh, where we configure git uh, for the repo to fetch. And this is also where we run a shell command uh, executing Gradle. And this is where we uh, publish the artifact. So this part is actually the DSL uh, generation for a Gradle job. So let's say you want to extend this for Maven, then you will uh, write a method called generate Maven job. And then uh, in your um, job, generate org job, you will add a parameter here to have a new type maven. And then that should be the only thing that you need to do. And then next time you run this program, uh, you will also catch the maven um, type job uh, from, your, from your org. But come back to our example here. So Netflix, I created 58 jobs by running this. And that job actually was executed locally. And as you can see, it's blue, uh, means it's successful. And in the workspace, you will find all the, all the files. Uh, in Artifact, also, you will find the, the build directory. And in that one, you should have the test result. You should have um, all the build artifacts. Um, one thing we can do now is once we have this implementation, we can also run for uh, different uh, org. So let's let's run it for Google. Uh, they have a lot of uh, open source projects using Gradle. And let's run it for uh, Facebook, which I believe they also have a few uh, Gradle projects. And then let's see what is the output for this. So Google, um, successful. Oh, so that was Netflix. What about this one? Okay, Google is here. And I guess it should be Netflix. Uh, Facebook should be the third one. Yeah, there we go. 
And then as you can see in our project, we will have uh, one directory for Facebook, which 12 jobs were found, and one directory for Google, where we have 41 jobs that were generated. And same thing, you could run uh, some locally, um, and they were all uh, generated very quickly, as you can see. So um, that's it for this example. As you can see, the, the DSL is very powerful. You can um, extend uh, your DSL scripts to use some uh, custom library. So any, any Java library, any Groovy library can be used. And uh, you can also reuse this example to add uh, custom types uh, that will uh, be um, used to generate the kind of projects that you have. And one of the very uh, strong feature here is that we didn't need to actually change the, the repo to generate our Jenkins configuration. So it could be very powerful that you can be in a situation where you don't even need to configure every repo. You can actually have some logic in Jenkins to say, oh, this is how I want to build this kind of a repo and then uh, run that uh, for all of your uh, GitHub repos and uh, everything is automated uh, and everything can be generated very quickly.